Oh, come, let us worship God, and let us bow down before the Lord who made us, for He is the Lord of our God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And on this February morning, I warmly welcome all of you here to St. Joseph's for our celebration of Mass. Thank God, Son, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. And you are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy upon us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. And you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, and the glory of, the glory of God the Father. Amen. Amen. Now let us pray. Keep your family safe, O oh Lord, with unfailing care, that relying solely upon the hope of heavenly grace. First reading is the reading from the book of Job. Job began to speak. There is not man's life on earth. Nothing is not man's life on earth, nothing more than press service. His time no better than hired drudgery. Like the slave, sighing for the shade, or the workman with no thoughts but for his wages. Months of delusion I have assigned me. Nothing for my own but nights of grief. Lying in bed, I wonder, when will it be day? Risen, I think, how slowly evening comes. Restlessly, I fret till twilight falls. Swifter than the weaver shuttle, my days have passed and vanished, leaving no hope behind. Remember that my life is but a breath and that my eyes will never again see joy. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to the Lord. And the response to the psalm. Praise the Lord who heals the broken heart. Praise the Lord who heals the broken heart. Praise the Lord for he is good. Sing to our God for he is loving. To him our praise is due. Response. Praise the Lord who heals the broken heart. The Lord builds up Jerusalem and brings back Israel's exiles. He heals the broken hearted. He binds up all their wounds. He fixes the number of the stars. He calls each one by its name. Response. Praise the Lord, who heals the broken heart. Our Lord is great and almighty. His wisdom can never be measured. The Lord raises the lowly. He humbles the wicked to the dust. Response. Praise the Lord, who heals the broken heart. The second reading is a reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. I do not boast of preaching the gospel, since it is a duty which has been laid on me. I should be punished if I did not preach it. If I had chosen this work myself, I might have been paid for it. But as I have not, it is a responsibility which has been put into my hands. Do you know what my reward is? It is this, in my preaching, to be able to offer the good news free and not insist on the rights which the gospel gives me. For though I am not a slave of any man, I have made myself a slave of everyone so as to win as many as I could. For the weak, I made myself weak. I made myself all things to all men in order to save some at any cost. And I still do this for the sake of the gospel, to have a share in its blessing. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We stand to greet the gospel. Alleluia! The 
raw direction of the truth for me. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Upon leaving the synagogue, Jesus went with James and John straight to the house of Simon and Anne. Now Simon's mother-in-law had gone to bed with fever, and they told him about her straight away. He went to her, he took her by the hand, and he helped her up. And the fever left her, and she began to wait on him. That evening after sunset, they brought to him all who were sick and those who were possessed by devils. Now the whole town came crowding around the door, and he cured many who were suffering from diseases of one kind or another. He also cast out many devils, but he would not allow them to speak, because they knew who he was. In the morning, long before dawn, he got up and he left the house, and went off to a lonely place, and he prayed for them. Simon and his companion set out in search of him, and when they found him, they said, Everybody is looking for him. And he answered, Let us go elsewhere, to the neighbouring country towns, so that I can preach there too, because that is why I came. And Jesus went all through Galilee, preaching in their synagogues, and casting out devils. The Gospel of the Lord. Just like to share with you this morning a few thoughts on the Gospel reading which I just proclaimed from the opening chapter of St. Mark verses 29 to 30. Well, in the Gospel, we see Jesus healing Simon's mother. We see him meeting the people of the locality. And he seeks to help them in, what any way, in whatever way he can. Then Mark tells us that he went to a lonely place prior to commencing preaching in the neighboring towns. So we might just look at each of these three things in turn. Jesus heals Simon's mother-in-law who is suffering with a fever. This morning, I invite you to reflect on those times in your life when you have been sick. Sick in body, sick in mind, sick in spirit. I again invite you to think of those people who took you by the hand, so to speak, and who lifted you up. We are indebted to many people throughout our lives for their thoughtfulness, their kindness, and their consideration. Perhaps this morning is a nap time for us to remember these people, to thank them for their kindness. And indeed, we might pray that the Lord would enable us to act in a similar fashion to people who may be in need of some thoughtfulness and consideration. St. Mark tells us that having restored Peter's mother-in-law to health. He meets the people of the locality. And he tells us that he cures them of many diseases, including those 
who had to come to terms with their own demons. What are the demons that afflict you? What are those things that restrain you? That limit their freedom? That imprison them? Well, I'm thinking this morning of things like fear, anxiety, guilt, a sense of low self-esteem, various addictions, bitterness, and hatred. These things literally imprison people. They severely curtail their freedom and their request. Again, I invite you to reflect on a time when you have experienced being freed from something or someone that held you captive. What was it like to experience that sense of freedom? No longer in thrall to something or someone whom you feel. Who helped you to overcome your deed? Again, worthy of some thought as we reflect on this morning's Gospel. And then St. Mark tells us that having cured Peter's mother-in-law, having come to the assistance of the people of the locality who were in need of healing, Jesus goes off to a lonely place to be by himself in order that he could pray. I will pose this question to you this morning. And in posing it to you, I pose it to myself too. Amidst the busyness of life, do you, do I, Take time out. Food for thought indeed on a dry, if somewhat cold, February morning. Let's stand up for it. I, I believe in one God, the Father of the Almighty, maker of heaven and of earth and of all things visible and invisible. And I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God and light from light, and true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, and through him all things were made. And for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit, he was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and he became him. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and he was buried. And upon the third day, he rose again in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, and who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, and who has spoken through the prophets. And I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward 
to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. God our Father, you show us your unfailing care of love as we offer you our prayers this morning. We pray for Pope Francis, who calls the Church to become what he calls a field hospital, a field hospital of welcome and healing, to celebrate the gift of God's mercy, especially with the wounded and all those who are broken. Lord Jesus. We pray this morning for all God's people, that they may know that they are guided by the light of faith and love. Lord Jesus. We pray for our world, which, as the poet Sherb Manley Hopkins reminds us, is charged with God's realm the grandeur of gift and presence. We thank you, God, today, and indeed every day, for your unending love towards us. Lord, hear us. We pray for all those who are sick. As we prepare to celebrate World Day of the Sick on February the 11th, the Feast of Our Lady of the May the sick, especially those in our parish, know the Lord's friendship and healing. Lord, hear us. We pray today for all those who are searching for meaning and purpose in their lives. May they be inspired by the power and indeed by the hope. We pray for all those who have died. We remember Aileen Connell as we celebrate his month's mind mass this morning. Again, I'd like to remember the late Brendan O'Connor who taught me English in Summer Hill. I'd like also to remember all our deceased parishioners. And we also keep in mind this morning in our prayers all those who have died in our country of COVID-19. O oh Lord God, through your mercy, may all of the dead rest in the peace of your loving and caring presence. Lord, hear us. O oh God, our Father, you fix the number of the stars and you call each one by its name. Hear the prayers that your people offer you here in St. Joseph's on this the 7th of February, for we do so with sincere hearts. We make these and all our prayers today, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread which we now offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for all of us the bread of life. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ Jesus, who humbled himself to share in our communion. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through our goodness we have received the wine that we now offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Prayer, my dear brothers and sisters. 
sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable. Unto God, the Almighty God. O Lord our God, who once established these created things to sustain us in our frailty, grant we pray that we may become, that they may become for us now the very sacrament of eternal life. And this, this prayer we make through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hands. Now let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is truly right and just. It is our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks, O Father most holy, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your word to whom you made all things, and whom you sent as our Saviour and our Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. Fulfilling your will, and gaining for you a holy people, he stretched out his hands as he endured his passion, so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so with all the angels and all the saints, we now declare your glory as with one voice we pray. Holy, holy, O Lord God of us, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and you are the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Holy Spirit upon them like the beautiful, so that they may become for all of us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time that he was betrayed and entered willingly into his family, he took bread, he gave him thanks, he broke it. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up. In a similar way, when the supper was ended, he, he took the chalice, and once more, giving him thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Together now we proclaim the mystery of our Christian faith as we say. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and we profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and his resurrection, we, we offer you, O Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ Jesus, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, O Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, with Kevin, our Bishop, and with all the clergy and religious. Remember Amen Conman, whom you have called from this world unto yourself. Grant that he, who was united with your Son in a death like his, may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the very life of your face. And remember also today the late Mr. Brendan O'Connor on the occasion of his first anniversary. All the deceased members of our parish here in Beaver and Highwood and again all those who have died of COVID-19 we pray for them now in silence. Oh. 
Have mercy upon us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of our God, with the Blessed Apostles, with Saint Paul Miki and his companions, Christian martyrs, Saint Mel, and all of the saints who have peace through throughout the ages, we may merit to be called heirs to eternity, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in O oh God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and forever. Amen. We now join and pray in the Lord's Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our Christmas as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, O Lord God, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin, and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Kingdom, the power, and the glory of the Lord is now and now forever. O Lord Jesus Christ, who said unto your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I now give unto you. Look not upon our sins, but rather upon the faith of your church, and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and who reign forever and The peace of the Lord be, be with you all. Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called unto the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Let them thank the Lord for his mercy, his wonders for the children of men and women, for he satisfies the thirsty soul and the hungry he fills with good things.
O Sacrament most holy, O Sacrament divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be of you. O Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you for coming to us this morning in the Sacrament of your body and your blood. Let it bring you to us, not condemnation, but rather health of mind and health of body. O Sacrament most holy, O Sacrament divine, all praise and all thanks to the end of the And on this every morning we pray for all the dead. Eternal rest grant unto them, O Lord, and may perpetual light shine upon them. And may their souls and the souls of all the faithful departed, through the mercy of Almighty God, rest in peace. Just a reminder that both our churches, St. Joseph's here in Geneva, and St. Bridget's in Highwood are open during the pandemic for private prayer. You might like to come to the church to light a candle in memory of a loved one or to pray for a particular attention. You might like to take a copy of the, the Missalette, perhaps read the readings here in the church in a quiet and meditative manner. You might like to pray the rosary. You might like to spend some time in silent adoration before the Blessed Sacrament. So just to remind you that both our churches are open, St. Joseph's here in Gila and St. Bridget's in Hyrule. I wish you a blessed Sunday. Let us now pray. O God, who have willed that we be partakers in the one bread and in the one chalice. Grant us, we pray so to live, that made one in Christ Jesus, we may joyfully bear food for the salvation of the world. This, this prayer we make today, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. The Lord be with you. And on this Sunday morning, may God bless you all. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Our last this morning is ended. We now go forth in the peace and in the joy of Christ. Thanks.